In this tutorial, we will be discussing the photoelectric effect. The nature of light and the photoelectric effect. The behavior of light. It's similar to that of an ocean wave. When you think about the ocean, or Lake Michigan for that matter, you notice that there's peaks and valleys. Well, the wavelength, which is lambda, is the distance between those two peaks and the amplitude is how high it gets. This is a lambda, while this is nu. Those are both Greek symbols and they're the abbreviations for these, for wavelength and frequency. It could also be explained by classical electromagnetic wave theory. A light wave's energy is directly proportional to the amplitude and the wavelength. So in other words, there's a direct relationship between the energy and these two variables. The shorter the wavelength, the more intense the light. So the shorter, the more intense. So more electrons or can be emitted. Classic electromagnetic wave theory attributed this effect to the light's energy being transferred to the electrons. Shining a light or the radiation energy on a metallic surface can cause electrons to be emitted from the surface. So they leave the surface when they gain energy from the light. The photoelectric effect led to the understanding of particulate nature of energy. Here's an example. Over here, we have a metallic surface. When we shine light on the metallic surface, electrons are emitted off. And that's how we know that the lights are shining, that, um, that you'll see metals glow, and so on and so forth. They're reflecting the light. We can capture how many electrons are given off during this process with a current meter. One photon has a threshold frequency give, gives the electron just enough energy to escape the atom. This is called the binding energy. So the binding energy is the energy to escape the atom. When the electron is irradiated, with the photon having a shorter wavelength, the electrons absorb more energy than is necessary to escape. So it's the binding energy is the amount of energy it's needed. However, it can absorb more than it needs. The excess energy becomes the kinetic energy of the ejected electron. So the kinetic energy is the energy of the photon minus the binding energy. The energy of the photon is Planck's constant times nu. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. And minus the binding energy, which is the energy to escape. The discovery of the photoelectric effect led to the understanding of the particulate nature of matter, specifically the electron. Einstein proposed that light energy was delivered to the atoms in packets, so in small quantities of energy called quanta or photons. The energy of a photon of light is directly proportional to its frequency, but inversely proportional to its wavelength. So here is the energy that we just discussed, and then we know that nu is equal to c over lambda. Remember c is the speed of light. Which is 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So if we combine these two equations and we plug C over lambda into nu, that's where we get this equation here. H times C over lambda. The, pro the proportionality constant is called Planck's constant, which is H. 
and has a value of 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per second. So from here we can figure out how much energy a photon has by knowing the wavelength that it has. So let's put this into practice. Laser light is used to read a CD with a wavelength of 785 nanometers. Determine the energy and frequency of 785 nanometers. Well, frequency is equal to C over lambda. Therefore, frequency is equal to 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second over lambda, but because uh, speed, speed of light is in meters, we need to convert 785 nanometers to meters. Nano means nine, so one times 10 to the ninth nanometers is equal to one meter. That comes out to be 7.85 times 10 to the negative seven meters. We're gonna plug that into the lambda. That comes out to be 3.82 times 10 to the 14th. Notice the meters cancel out and we left over with seconds, but it's one over seconds. Another way of writing that, one over seconds is the same thing as hertz. So I could say 7.82 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Now to find the energy, energy is equal to Planck's constant times nu, times the frequency which we just determined. So Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. Its units is joules times seconds. We're gonna multiply this by the frequency. This time the seconds cancel and we're left over with joules, which is a, indeed a unit of energy. That comes out to be 2.53 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. An object gains or loses radiant energy, which is light, by either absorbing or emitting radiant energy. Radiant energy is absorbed and emitted in discrete packets called quantas, which is Planck's constant times nu, which is what we just solved for here. And that gives you an introduction to the photoelectric effect in solving for energy using the wavelength.